So this week's video is all about cable sizing. It's about the right fusing and how to make cables up and make them look pretty. But first, it's tea time. Go and get yourself a cup of tea. See you in two. Welcome back. Have you got your tea? Good, good. Right. So we were talking about cable sizes. Why is it important to get the cables right? If you get the cable sizes wrong, if you put too much current through too thin a cable, the result is heat. That heat could lead to fire, but that's quite dramatic. The biggest problem is voltage loss, um, losing that that current to heat specifically in that cable. Even though a short piece of cable, if you had a one mil cable and you put 25 amps through it, you're likely to burn that bit of cable, even if it might be just a, a few hundred, you know, a few centimeters long. But you start getting into inverters where you're talking two or three hundred amps. Well, there's a huge difference. A good rule of thumb of up to five meters. Um, if it's any longer, you know, you need to maybe change the calculation side, but we'll get onto that later. So a good rule of thumb for calculating cable uh, sizes up to about five meters is the uh, the by three rule of thumb. So if your cable is going to be carrying 200 amps, you can divide that by three, which gives you 66, and that's 66 in millimeters and, uh, in your square cable sizes. So, uh, you know, a really good, easy rule of thumb, easy one to remember then when you're trying to do calculations of, of cable runs. And it works all the way down from very small amps up to very large amps. You know, it doesn't really matter, it's all the same thing. Now you've got your cable sizing off to a T and you understand that, then it's in, in protection. We need to protect those cables. You can't just have a bit of cable with point, point A and point B because if something goes wrong, once it gets red hot, it could catch fire. So you need to then protect that piece of cable with a fuse. Many different types of fuses. You've got your, um, your large mega fuses, for your large loads, and then some for your smaller loads. Um, now these are things for like inverters and your battery cables and from the battery um, to, your, to your switches and so on and so forth and, uh, and the smaller uh, midis are for things like we, we use them for Orions and uh, you know anything that's going to connect, connect to your battery anywhere from sort of 30 to you know 100 amps but typically 30, 60, 80 amps. But why use a fuse? Well a fuse is designed to protect that cable. The fuse needs to blow before the cable melts or catches fire. So this needs to be considerably lower than the maximum amperage load of that cable. So let's say 16 mil cable. Um, we typically use that for Orions, um, you know, B2B charging, anything with you know up to about with a, a real world load of around about sort of 60 amps. Nothing more than that, especially over a few meters. Uh, 16 mil cable is technically ca capable of carrying 110 amps. You wouldn't want to do that, but technically that's what it can carry. And then we use like 60 amp fuse, so that's obviously going to go and pop a long time um, before the cable catches fire. So a very important thing to have. Now we know why we need fuses and why it's important to have these bad boys. The other thing that's important is isolation. You should never have an installation without the ability to isolate it completely from your battery bank. So we always put in a, a fuse, typically a 250 amp hour, 300 amp mega fuse. Um, and then we'd have something like this, which is a Victron Energy 275 amp switch. It's just a, a, a single pole rotary switch. It's capable of, um, of cranking amps of 1,250 amps. Um, but with a switch disconnected 275 amps. So we use these between the battery and the main distribution, like your, your bus bars or uh, a Lynx distributor, for instance. Uh, we also use them in solar as well as a way to isolate the, uh, the power source if you need to work on it in the vehicle. Okay, so typical cabling, I mean, we, we we could kind of standardise what we do really. We typically use um, 40 mil for up to a, uh, a two kilowatt inverter. 40 mil cable is capable of carrying around 300 amps. So it's a good range. It's a nice easy cable to work with. Good size, fits in everything. Um, and it's you know, easy to lug. With 40 mil cable, we use it for from the, the uh, battery to the bus bars, bus bars to inverter. Um, also grounding the system as well, that's all done in, in, in 40mm, um, you need to keep those cables the same. 
the other thing you need to do is, if you can, especially between the bus bars and the inverter, is keep those cable lengths the same. Always keep those cables at the same length so it keeps the system nice and balanced. It's very important. Also, when you brace battery, uh, batteries together, when you've got them in, in, either in series or parallel, always make sure those cables are exactly the same length because any resistance differences in those cables can upset the balancing of those spells, especially within uh, in lithium uh, LiFePo4 batteries. Very important to keep those exactly the same. Everything needs to be matched and perfect. Well, then we'll go down to 16mm and we'll use that for um, solar charge controllers to um, bus bars from the starter battery of the vehicle to the Orion and then the Orion to the uh, distribution block or uh, Lynx uh, uh, distributor. 6mm cable is typically solar, um, specifically the solar cable which has got the UV protection in it. We use that on, on the outside of the vehicle because you know obviously sun damage. Um, and also we use 6mm but not, not solar cable but uh, usually twin core PVC cladded for uh, fridges um, you know for decent runs because you need nice thick cable for a fridge because on startup they do pull quite a lot and sometimes they'll fail um, if you use 3mm cable for instance over a couple of meters um, the fridges don't like it like I said earlier in the video we use 16mm pretty much for everything um, when it comes to battery to battery charging um, and sort of like even fuse box runs because you know it doesn't harm to oversize because you, we buy these cables in such quantities anyway it doesn't really make that much of a financial difference um, but we know that whatever is going to happen with that system are, we're never going to be undersizing it we haven't got oh, we didn't we didn't put such a big cable because we didn't think you were going to run that kind of load so it's just use it you know a standard you know just make it bigger if you're not sure just make it bigger it's as simple as that really so what are bus bars and why do we use them well a bus bar is what is a bus bar it's like a cable but it's a rigid uh, place to mount everything um, it creates a much tidier install a much safer install so you will probably often see them where you have the positive battery terminal with a bolt in it and a bunch of cables coming off it and that's really dangerous I mean if something gets stuck in there you can get a bit of plastic caught it can um, it can cause a short it can overheat or high resistance it's just a really bad thing to do so how do we get power to our bus bar or where do we put it in in the circuit well you would go from your battery but you'd be go battery uh, to a fuse an isolator and then on to your bus bar so that would be your main incomer, main power from your battery. So all your system, the rest of your system is powered from here, but you've still got that fuse and you've still got that isolator. So once you flick that isolator off, this is completely dead. So it makes the system completely safe and isolated at that point. So once you've got power to your bus bar, you can take it then to a main fuse board. You can have your incomers, so you can have your solar charge controllers and your battery to batteries come into this point, through fuses as well, of course. We'll talk about that later. But yeah, that is why we use the bus bar. We also have the um, same thing in negative. It works exactly the same way. No isolation required. But it just, again, just keeps things tidier as well. So again, it don't all have to go back to a, a bolt in the chassis or to the negative terminals of the battery. So it would always go from here. And if you use a smart shunt or any kind of shunt, the only thing that could be connected to the negative terminal battery is that shunt. So it goes from the shunt to your negative bus bar, negative bus bar to chassis and all your other negative loads. These particular bus bars we use are um, 300 amp, so yeah, they, they'll pull a lot of current um, without getting warm again, which you don't want. Um, and anything you see here will have links to in the description where you can buy them on our website. Right, in the next video, we'll be talking about how to terminate cables correctly. So the link to the video will be in the description below or you can click on the card up here. If you've got any questions you want to ask, feel free, please pop in the comments and we will do our best to answer them. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again. Don't forget to like and subscribe.